Hello, and welcome to my mock trial series. Today, closing arguments. Closing arguments are the part of the trial that typically gets highlighted in any film, movie, or television show. It is important. It's your last opportunity to talk to the jury and summarize the points in your favor. However, it's a lot more than just simply high theater. In a closing argument, you really want to do a couple of things. Number one, you want to summarize the facts. Number two, you need to argue how the facts support your claim. Number three, you need to pay very close attention to the jury instructions. And what I mean by that is juries don't just decide cases based off what they think. Juries are given what are called instructions, which means a series of papers, usually read aloud by the judge, that explain what the elements of the offense are. The elements of the offense are things that the state or plaintiff have to prove in order for their case to prevail. And the last thing that you need to do is You've got to do something that appeals to that pathos part of the argument, something that gives the jury something that they can latch on to, something that empowers them, that makes them feel like they can do justice today. There's a lot here that just simply requires practice. There's almost, and I, I won't say never, but there's almost never objections during closing arguments. Just about anything goes because it's pure argument. As long as you're not arguing things that aren't in the, the record, things that people didn't say, you can get away with just about anything. So this is the opportunity to let your persuasive and oratorical skills shine. Let's take a look at one example. Although I'm going to stress again that in order to become good at this, what you must do is really practice. Now let's pretend, and if you can remember from my piece on cross-examination, we did this scenario where this young woman had stolen or allegedly stolen something from a store. The jury instructions, let's pretend in this case, are three parts. The state has to prove three things. One, that the defendant took and carried away some item. Number two, no one consented, that is, nobody let the defendant do that. And number three, said item had a monetary value, all right? So let's pretend that I'm the prosecutor at this point. I might summarize the case as follows. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the case before you is absolutely crystal clear. On January the 15th, 2003 at 7.03 p.m., officers responded to a call at Walmart where they confronted the defendant. After they confronted the defendant, they determined that she had several items in her purse, items that she did not pay for, items that no one at the store said that she was allowed to take. Ladies and gentlemen, there are three parts to this offense that you must find in order to find this defendant guilty. Number one, that they took and carried away some item. In this case, that is clear. The defendant in this case had several items in her purse at the time that she was stopped. Number two, that no one consented to the defendant taking and carrying away said item. In this case, we have clear and convincing evidence that the defendant did not pay for those items, nor did she receive permission from anyone at the store to take those items for free. And lastly, it has already been established that these items had a monetary value of $47.50. I entreat you, ladies and gentlemen, to find the defendant guilty as the state has proven beyond a reasonable ground all parts of the offense. We, ladies and gentlemen, live in a society of laws, and those laws need to be upheld. Stores need to be able to sell things to each and every one of us, and as they do that, they need to be secure and knowing that those items will not be taken away for free. If we don't have that, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a society of laws, and we don't have a society at all. All right. So that's a very simple, straightforward closing argument. This is a very simple case, of course, where I lay out the facts, I explain how they relate to the jury instructions, and then at the very end, I entreat the jury to do something about it. Closing arguments are a lot of fun. You get to really let your skills as a public speaker shine, but they do take a lot of practice. I recommend in any mock trial situation, practicing your closing argument no less than five times from beginning to end it needs to be polished. It needs to be, shall I say, perfect. If you do that, 
should get an excellent score.